Hello everyone and uh, thanks for coming to hear my talk on this uh, Ember add-on that I've been um, working on um, the last few months. Um, we all think that uh, in integration testing is a good thing. Um, hopefully you're doing it. <laughs> uh, personally, I like to do maybe 70% of my time uh, writing integration tests, maybe 30% writing unit tests. You know, I just like to see if my application is working. Um, Okay, so um, the reason that I, I wrote this add-on is because w as I was writing the um, integration tests, acceptance tests for Ember applications, I was finding that um, it was quite uh, repetitive, not very um, exciting, and it was quite predictable, and I saw a lot of patterns, and um, there wasn't anything like new intellectually that I was doing, so I thought it would be maybe a nice idea to have like a, a recording uh, user interactions um, and um, seeing if I can play it back through like the QUnit system, and I'm um, sort of like um, an Excel macro in a sense, but uh, in Ember. And um, so, um, the way that my app, this add-on is designed to be worked is like when you get your application. Um, if you're not doing TD, then basically, when you, if you have an untested application and it's in a happy state, and you want to sort of uh, hard code that um, into tests. You bring my um, add-on into your application, and it would record what's going on and record things that are changing and stuff like that, and, and generate tests. That was um, that was the uh, the ambition, and my ambition is to uh, let's see. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how it works. Um, there's um, two things going on uh, when it's doing the tests. Uh, I have a, a series of um, loops and recursive loops going over the DOM, adding uh, mutation observers. Has anyone used mutation observers before? Uh, a lot of these newer browsers, they have basically ways to watch uh, for changes in the DOM. And if something changes, like an attribute or something added or removed, uh, um, fires off an event. And you can basically uh, tap into it and extract information. And um, so in this, when this uh, component is added to your app, it basically goes through your application and sets up all these lis listeners and things like that. And, um, and also, uh, as you're interacting with the app, uh, click events, jQuery, focus in events, stuff like that, it will then uh, generate like, code stubs. And uh, the DOM mutations will then be injected into there and generate your tests. Uh, and um, yeah, this is a combination that does this. So as the user is in, um, Clicking on the screen, we uh, generate some uh, some like click here, fill in this, and then there's like a a placeholder for changes that will then happen, uh, sort of asynchronously, stuff like that. And these mutations from uh, mutation observers will then look for this placeholder and basically uh, fill, in, fill in all these bits here. So uh, as you click on things, you basically it's basically a lot of string manipulation that's going on. Um, basically, get these bits filled out, and then things that change. Um, I have some sort of very basic uh, assertions, you know, like is this visible and stuff like that. Eventually, I want to do some like heuristical stuff, maybe looking at things moving around and things like that. But I haven't quite worked out how that's going to work yet. <laughs> so um, uh, there were some complications. I will do a live demo, by the way. <laughs> Uh, there were some complications um, that I had to think about quite a lot to get this thing to work. Um, when uh, things are removed from the DOM, it's quite easy to generate a, a test for it. And you, you can sort of just forget about all the listeners that are set up because they, they get removed with the garbage collection and stuff like that. Um, but when we add DOM to the page, then I sort of don't really know how many DOM, inner DOM elements that will be inside it. And mutation observers, they only sort of work at the DOM level that they're observing. It's, you see the DOM and then it's children immediately. So I had to sort of drill down through the DOM and add <laughs> mutation observers dynamically, which whenever I go back to look at this code, it takes me about an hour to figure out <laughs> how to change things, you know? And um, there was some, uh, that, the add-on works okay when you're doing it in your apps, but when it was sort of in the actual dummy app and I was testing it, then there was some, some issues I had to sort of work around. So um, how to use this in your project. 
So basically, all it is is a, a little component that you basically um, stick in your application HBS file, this here. And what it does is it gives you a little UI at the bottom right hand side of your screen. And as you're um, doing your stuff with the application, it's sort of generating the code. And then you basically take that code and copy and paste it in um, the end to end test files. Like, and um, there's certain things you can add to your DOM that if you don't want it to be recorded, like say you have some uh, list that's sort of changing stock up change charts, and it'll just you know you don't want all this stuff being observed. You know, <laughs> generating a big long long test, then you can sort of ignore all the stuff in there, and then you just basically start interacting with your app. So hopefully, I can do a live demo if I can figure out how to switch to my. Um, Browser. This is the first time I've ever done a presentation on this <laughs> this Mac. So, uh, oh, uh, the aim of this is to be your test recording coding monkey. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have um, basically I've created a dummy app in the uh, the project on, on GitHub. It's just Ember CLI test recorder, and this is the um, the UI here. Uh, eventually, I want to make this resizable and stuff like that, but I haven't really got around to it. I can't concede to see my mouse pointer. Does anyone know how to? Sorry for a moment there. So this is basically an example of, uh, if you can imagine I've been clicking on those inputs and things on that screen there and toggling between the routes and stuff like that. Um, this is what actually is generated. So um, basically, everything inside here, apart from the test block, is what's been generated. So. Um, for example, um, when they uh, click on a, a text input, um, and when you finish typing on it, it captures the focus out event and generates this stub here. Can you see that? Is that too small? Okay. So what it's done is um, generated, uh, I've tried to copy the uh, test helpers, how they work. Um, if you click on a, a, an Ember element that doesn't have a an ID, it generates a dynamic path to basically reach it. So what I was finding a lot when I was writing integration tests is that I hadn't given a lot of things IDs and in order to get it to work, I had to like go and give, give them all IDs. So I thought that I would just be lazy and generate, if there wasn't an ID, you can just, it would just know how to get to it. Um, a lot of these things like, uh, that appear on the screen or are removed from the screen. For example, if they click on like uh, this button here, which I think was changed to another route or something, um, it would know that this thing disappeared and it would generate an assertion. And then if things were added, then it would basically generate this assertion here. This has been added to your page. Um, and let's just see if this runs on, on the screen. So this, so this basically, I only did it up to 13 different steps, but it only captures sort of button clicks and like text inputs. But um, on my to-do list, there's quite a few things. Uh, let's get uh, there's a um, <coughs> for a, road, a roadmap for it. I want to make this thing more robust, so I want to be able to um, generate tests for other components like uh, select two inputs and, and other things that I used a lot. Because for example, in the select two input, in order to trigger a selection, you have to trigger mouse click here and then do things. And maybe some date pickers and uh, things like that. But um, so far, I don't think um, anyone's used it in the wild. So hopefully, <laughs> this will inspire you to try it out. If you're feeling a bit lazy and want to see this thing record some tests, um, I could show you some of the code, but it's a bit uh, needs a bit of refactoring. So I don't know. Um, So we have a lot of basically. Um, we set this is for example this here um, is the. Uh, see, this code takes a while to even for me to figure out how it does again. <laughs> um, okay, so when when the components insert into the page, we basically um, get a hold of the mutation observer class, and depending on various browsers, then 
there. That's that's the uh, just to get that there. Um, and this is, for example, recording the, uh, the code that's to generate the fill-in event. So basically, I uh, attach to any input on the page and in a focus out event, uh, I check to see um, what type of input that is. At the moment, I'm just this is just checking if it's text, uh, and then uh, I have some code to generate the path or to get the ID of the um, component, so I can then target it uh, on the playback. Um, and then I just basically I'm, ge I'm just generating text text concatenation. For the click events, um, uh, I'm basically doing a similar thing. Um, and then I'm generating the stubs, and I'm generating generating uh, placeholders for when the mutations happen after you click on it. Uh, so the actual mutations happen um, with these when I create basically this is a recursive uh, sort of recursive thing. Uh, I add observer for a DOM element. That's how you create a new mutation observer. observer. Uh, and um, you have it as a callback that's called when thing, something changes. And um, there's quite a lot of nodes that get returned to that are not quite what you're expecting sometimes. There's things like white space and like carriage returns and stuff like that are sort of in, are in the DOM. And uh, I ignore all this stuff. I have some filters for it. Um, so I basically get these added nodes and stuff like that. And uh, I basically then loop over them and generate assertions, like this sort of thing here. Um, and then this is a recursive part where uh, it sort of drills down through the DOM to get access to um, sort of nested DOM to see changes inside of it. So. Yeah, this needs a bit of a refactor, I'm afraid. <laughs> bit of a lot of <laughs> yeah. But um that's 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 mostly what's what's going on there, but Can I have a quick go and try and get your mouse points back? I'd love to see Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Uh, is this something that you just use it in testing? Yeah. Do you use it with like large sets of users or can you put it on a Oh it's just for a developer to, to record? It's, it's basically a developer trying to rec record his um, to generate integration tests. It's like just so you can just copy and paste his code, stick it in integration tests. That's it. But, um, yeah, that's. Oh, was it? Uh, I don't know. Is that is that? Oh, really? Yeah. Selenium. The problem, at least when I try to use Selenium, is that everything is an X path from the root. Yeah. So basically, as soon as you change something in your on your markup, the selector breaks and it's not useful anymore. All oh, right. Okay. Tell you what, it's, it seems to yeah work like that. So you won't have it in front of you. But I want. Makes you get sit in action. I want to use it to maybe ex extract all this. Mutation stuff outside of the Ember CLI, and then have it available for like a protractor testing. But then I would have I'll have it as a as a dependency and an Ember add-on, so then I could use it because a lot of that imitation stuff you could use it with any. They think you just how you, by example, if you click on a on a button, how do you get the best selector for this button? I mean, basically, if the if the element has an ID, that's it. If the element doesn't have an ID, yeah. how do you identify this in the test? Well, just to get its parent, its parent, its parent, up to the Ember div. You just walk upwards. And yeah. It. <laughs> because you can, in the test runner, originally I was going all the way up to the head, up to the HTML, but then in a test runner, it's all relative to like the container it's in. So you don't have to worry about what the um, Q unit divs are about and stuff like that. You just do, you know, there's the paths that are generated. Ah, here we are. So you don't have it on this screen, but you do have yeah. it on that one. Okay. Right, so um, let's just uh, click on this, right? So uh, hello, and uh, click out of it. And uh, so basically, visit here, and it's this, this, has got a, this has got an ID, so it's giving us an ID here, right? Um, then I, I click on this thing here, and nothing's happened on the screen. There's no mutations or nothing like that. 
So it's basically, and then is stub empty. Um, if there's something that has changed, then obviously, and, and there's no code that entered in there, then the test record is not clever enough to. But hopefully, the community will get involved and they'll, they'll try it and they'll try and add things that will record heuristically things that are happening in your app. But I've kind of just kept it with predictable things. Um, I'm just going to be nice and gentle with it because I don't. <laughs> like, well, so this one here is, is an, I've got a root called foo, and uh, this one didn't have an ID. So basically, it's generated the path for the um, test. And uh, there's been a bunch of um, DOM added here. So basically, it's uh, it's basically said that, oh, it's noticed that the root's changed here. So it says, um, it's noticed that the root name is um, foo. And get current root names a function that uh, I pass into the component, I think. Um, so the page navigates to foo on button click. And then this register inputs disappeared. So it says this is removed after. Then you just write your reason there. I could probably improve that, but I haven't quite worked out how to do that yet. Uh, and there's also like another div that's been added here. And uh, shown after you, you know, click on the button. I can probably improve that as well. This is a uh, an in-page button here. So if I click on that, <coughs> it's uh, generated this click thing here. Uh, and then um, basically there's something that's disappeared. So it's, it's picked up that. I click it again. Then uh, it's noticed that that's been added. So then I can click back to the index route. Um, <coughs> that button also didn't have an, ID, have an ID, so it's given us this path. And then, you know, in theory, I can just copy and paste this. I can actually click on it and just do that. And, to, and then go to my test. Uh, which you see on my screen. Your screen is to the left of the projector. Is that left? So I have to. to the right oh, right, I see. All right, okay. So let's just get rid of all this. And this is quite satisfying when this works. And I haven't really done any brute force, just shoving masses of stuff. It's quite a simple application, you know. But um, at some point, I'm, I'm kind of making it more and more, um, adding more things to it. So, oh, yeah, so it's basically, I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw the, do the little stuff that I've done there. <laughs> Can you see it? So you saw it there a bit, right? Yeah, quick click rerun next to the acceptance test at the top. All right. And that's so you can see it. So, um, yeah. Cool. So that's it. Hopefully it'll be useful and save you some time. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> It's exactly the same as you would. It's basically all, it's just all generated codes. So if something fails, then it behaves exactly the same. It's um, not doing anything special with it. It's just what I'm trying to do is gen generate tests that you would write yourself. But um, obviously, it's, there's certain things that it won't, you know, it doesn't know exactly what you want to test, but it tries to figure that out. And it gives you more probably than you would write. And you can just delete the stuff you don't want from the actual code. So if you don't like this thing here, or if, you know, um, you don't care about these inputs, and you just you know delete that, or um, you can do something, you know, it'll, it'll still uh, it'll just not run that test. And if you do something bad, to, you know, it'll just uh, it'll fail. You know. um, also, what I want to do is I want to create some like pause, pause, start buttons and stuff like that, so that you can. It won't just be recording and recording, you know, so. You know, just <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? It seems like it should be a Chrome plugin rather than a Chrome VMware application. Because if you want to install it to your application to record the test, you may have to uninstall it before you get your code in. <coughs> well, um, you can just do like an NPM install, not save it to your package, Jason, so that all it'll do is it'll give you a node module with the file, and then you just bring the component into your app. And then, but you don't commit anything, so 
You don't even need to tell anyone you're using it. You could just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to. <laughs> um, it, it seems like it would just be like a small skip and a jump to turn the, the pathfinding into kind of like a something that builds a unique path for the document, you know, because at, it looks like at the moment you're kind of just taking the sort of the longest, the definite unique path towards Yeah, the exactly, yeah. But it, it, it seems like you could probably go, okay, so this component has this class name, let's test the whole document and see if there's anything else with that class name. That's, that's a great idea. And then you could just keep building it until it, there's only one. Yeah, that's a great idea. Which would be awesome, because that, that's the only thing for me is like, I do change the DOM, like we all change the DOM quite a lot, and yeah. then once it's in a stable state, we need to move X to Y. And if we have done the very bare minimum we need to do to generate those selectors, then that's the best chance we have to not break the test. Yeah, so. that's a good idea. If you want to do pull requests. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm about to use it on an admin interface that's Great. all written with Ember's, Ember material design, so that's going to be like yeah. a really good I'm thinking of using Ember Material actually, I'm because I'm, um, I'm using Angular Material, and uh, I really love Material. I'm I'm thinking of just ditching Bootstrap and Zurb and then just going to going to Material Design because it uses Flexbox as well, which is if you only care about evergreen browsers and Flexbox is I don't know if anyone's used Flex Flex layouts. It's, it's, it's really really nice, and um, what you can really reduce the amount of markup you need to do certain things like position them in the middle of a page and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah. Is that would that be Ember specific or would that be you like yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Actually on, on that note, it seems like it could be somewhat agnostic. Yeah. So the bit that writes the tests could be split off and yeah. unified and the bit that does the record yeah. could be its own standalone framework agnostic. Yeah, but that's kinda of what roadmap I want to go with this yeah. thing. Nice. And um, have you seen that um Apple has copied you for the latest version of Xcode. You can, um, right. you can in, in the new integration testing stuff for Cocoa Apps, you can hit record and spin up the app in the simulator or itself in uh, on OS X. Click around and it will do the same thing, writing into the test file. Great. Except that yours does more because yours observes the mutations and then writes those assertions for you, whereas theirs just does the like. Recording of clicks and drags and stuff like that. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It's. I think we should be automating things that can be automated. You know, there's no point. Right. I mean, writing the actual application code is something that only we can do. But if it's if it's just playing back, you know, it's, it's, we could get a computer to do it for us. Do you ever do them the other way around, where you write the acceptance test before you write the code? Uh, well, in this case, that would no, no, be no, 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 hard. No. Kind of hard. <laughs> Um, I don't really do it in practice, there's not enough time. <laughs> but yeah, test down development is, is that ideal, you know. It's that idea of get the and actually react that idea and click around on it and say, I expect this to happen in my UI when it gets Yeah, I mean, I guess for me it's more the workflow that you'd actually, you'd, you'd kind of, the test would be the first thing you do rather than the, the code potentially. So you'd, you'd write the, the test to just say, I expect this to change and then fill that out kind of thing. But it's a different, it's a different kind of You mean something like, this would use to write tests somehow? No, no, I just mean as in sometimes the, the workflow is literally that you'd, like rather than you writing it and then testing that it works, you'd, you'd try and uh, dictate what you expect to happen before yeah. and then fill out that contract. So it's a slightly different workflow. Like yeah. You wouldn't be in the situation where you'd define the flow without already having said what you expected, you'd have written what you expect and then made it fit, but it's a slightly different form. We could look like you could sort of write a test in this add-on and it would spit an, ep an Ember <laughs> application, wouldn't it? <laughs> 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 this, this does seem like it would work really well for QA teams, mm. where they, you know, they 
literally have a script that yeah. they being will follow, and if, if whilst following that they could be recording. Yeah, I thought I thought it'd be really nice for protector guys. Yeah. That's that's um, um, there's there's a an M, M, Angular CLI add-on that's um, in development, and, I, and I'm pinged one of the guys there, and I says I'm I'm doing this test record, and I'd like to if you do a test thing, sure. I want to do it for the, ang the Angular stuff. So, but it's really quiet right now. It's an intern that's doing it, so yeah. hopefully they'll get back on and that'll. <laughs> How did you write the integration test? That's actually a good point. Basically, yeah, that's that's that, that's part of the road. That's part of the roadmap. If somebody, if someone asks me what code I'm writing, I'm going to have to say something. I'm writing the integration test that tests the code that the integration test recorder generates. So uh, basically, that's going to be yeah. I'm going to basically um, <coughs> do that test that was see all that code that was generated. I'll basically copy and paste that into its own exceptions test, and then basically compare that to the string that's generated and see. <laughs> That'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you might be able to get some useful information from like the Ember instrumentation um, things, because I'm, I know if you've got like certain log levels turned on, then it says roots change to this and, and roots change to that. And because Ember's hijacking all of the links on the page, um, to do like the link to things. I don't, I, I don't know if they're tracking exactly which, like if, if on the instrumentation helpers you can hook in to get notified of which DOM node what clicked or anything, yeah. but it might be worth looking at. Yeah, maybe you could ping a message and explain more about that, because I don't really know anything about that, the, um, how that works. Um, yeah, they've got, I think they've got this set of instrumentation helpers where they allow you to s subscribe to various events that happen as people are interacting with your app. So it's just a comment that there might be some useful information yeah. in there. Yeah, that's how the, the rendering performance tabs works in the inspector. It can subscribe to um, the components like start rendering and render hooks right, and right. do stuff with that. And then I think there's a hook for any time a component is looked up and all these various things. Yeah. But wouldn't that be... That's listening to the stuff that's supposed to happen. This listens to stuff that you, maybe you didn't intend to happen because it's listening to the DOM, not to how you build it, yeah. right? So maybe that would be the, the difference between one is built in as intended to say, did this happen? Yep, it happened. Whereas here you might see something like, why is that triggering these three things over here? Yeah. Yeah. It maybe has different purposes. It's like a really good plan, but we had a copy <laughs> yeah, so why don't you just click on that and it just it selects all the text and then you just copy and paste it. But what is, the trouble is, is trying to make that window um, small enough it doesn't interfere, interfere with the uh, actual application you're writing to. It's not, like, I could um, add a jQuery UI to it and make it resizable, but I don't really want to blow it off a bit. I was trying to. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm open to any pull requests. You know, it's, been, it's been quite slow developing this over the past few months, but um, yeah, hopefully the community will start to use it. Yeah. If you, uh, I think in theory it would be possible to literally record it to disk as you went, like have a server component running within the Ember CLI server, yeah. client component, send send these things down over the socket as you go and yeah. them into a test yeah. file, seems feasible. Yeah, I mean that could be like a config option, um, I think also some users still want to have, be able to see the test that's, while it's running. So yeah, but that would be a, a useful addition to it. Alright, um any more questions? Okay, well let's hear it for Nikos.